Amen. Let's pray. Laten we bidden. Our kind and loving Father. Ons liefdevolle God. Thank you so much, Lord, for another day of life. Dank u Heer voor ons leven. Another day of probation. Another dag van uh, probation. Uh, Genade tijd. Ja. Another day in which we can hear the voice of Jesus speaking to our hearts. Another dag dat wij de stem van Jezus in ons kan horen in ons hart. Oh Father, I plead that your presence would be with us now as we open up your inspired word. Oh Father, ik bid u dat u ons zal inspireren door het openen van uw woord. And may your word truly burn within our hearts. Dat uw woord zal branden in ons hart. And may it burn away sin from our lives. Dat het wordt uitgebrand van de zonde uit ons leven. Help us to see the matchless charms of Jesus. Dat we de boze van Jezus mogen aannemen. And may our hearts be drawn ever closer to Him in whom we adore. Ons hart dichter tot Jezus mag komen. Please bless us now and abide with us. Help us, zegen ons Heer, door uw woord. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dat bidden we in Jezus' naam. Amen. 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 Um, good morning, good afternoon. Goedemorgen, middag. Are you ready to study? Uh, bent u klaar om te beginnen? Um, what are we going to do in this session? Wat ik wil doen in deze sessie? We are going to try our best by God's grace. We zullen door Gods genade... Um, to compress what we want to study. Om de, saam, de, de studie wat uh, korter uh, tot elkaar te brengen, samen te vatten. Much had to cut out. Niet om het uit te snijden. Because I don't want to kill the translator with so much reading. Dat is uh, wat... Uh, sorry? <laughs> I don't, don't want to overwork the translator because of so much reading. Ik zal, uh, kan de translator een beetje... <laughs> Uh, met veel werk belasten. Um, what we're going to be looking at today is um, we're going to look at the Bible specifically at the loud cry. We gaan kijken naar de Bijbel met betrekking tot de luide roep. Also, we're going to look at briefly the history of 1888. We gaan vooral kijken naar de geschiedenis van de message van 1888. And then the consequences of rejecting the 1888 message was the alpha and omega of apostasy. En de gevolgen dat ze hebben afgewezen deze boodschap dat een trek heeft tot alpha en de omega. And I tell you that today the omega currently is operating within God's church. En ik stel dat uh, uh, momenteel dat de boodschap van de Omega juist voor de kerk bestemd is. Have you ever heard of the Alpha and Omega? Maybe I'm speaking um, Greek or Hebrew. Have you ever heard of the, Al- the Alpha and Omega of apostasy? Yeah. Heeft u ooit gehoord over de okay. boodschap van Alpha en Omega dat leidt tot, uh, tot uh, afvalligheid? Oké, okay, some of us have heard about it. We're going to briefly touch on it. It's not going to be an exhaustive study. But we zullen zien in de studie hoe het, dat het ons zal inwerken. Now, we are told in Life Sketches, the book Life Sketches, page um, 196. Kijk naar de boek Life Sketches, uh, 196. Uh, uh, Inspiration says we have nothing to fear for the future. Het zegt dat we zullen niet vrezen voor de toekomst. Except we shall forget the Lord's leading and teaching in our past history. Zijn we vergeten dat God ons leidt in deze uh, 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 periode van afvalligheid. So, sorry. In het verleden. Wow, sorry. Okay. So we're going to look at the history of our movement briefly and we kijk naar de geschiedenis van onze van onze beweging. I I I fell in love with Adventist history. Ik ben uh, ik hou van de uh, Adventgeschiedenis. There's some good things and there's some sad things. Er zijn goede dingen maar er zijn ook uh, treurige dingen. In 1888 do you know that the church was on the on the borders of I would say I would say that the church came to the gates of heaven so to speak. Dus in 88 kwam de uh, kerk dus tot uh, het hek van de, de hemel. Van de hemel. And do you know that in this generation we once again at the borders of the gates of heaven. En wie weet dat wij door komen tot de hek van de and, hemel. And this time. En deze in deze tijd. God is not sending his people to go back to one day in this world any more longer. God zendt niet alleen zijn volk terug naar datgene. Those who are going to surrender their lives to Jesus. Zij die zich overgeven aan met hun leven aan Jezus. Do you know that God is not worried with numbers? God is maar zich niet zorgen over getallen. Do you know that currently today when people look at numbers they think success. Dat uh, vandaag zijn mensen die altijd succes hebben door getallen. That's not how God views things. Dat is niet wat God hen daarvoor wil gebruiken. When God was going to win victories with Gideon and his army, God had to reduce that army. You know why? There was too many people. Maar God zijn uh, volk gebruikt tot uh, voor een oorlog. Hij kijkt niet naar getallen. 
And do you know what was the test, the dividing line, the shaking in which God used to shake his people back then to determine whom he's going to use and whom he's going to shake out? Dus in die, op dat punt van de scheiderslijn, hij kijkt niet naar de getal, hij kijkt naar degene die klaar zijn en die niet klaar zijn. It was on the issue of diet. En dat heeft te maken met het kwestie van dieet. Do you know what was the difference between those in Gideon's army which God rejected and in God used? Weet u wat uh, toen speelde dat God uh, degene afwees die niet daarvoor klaar zijn? It was over the way they drank water. Het heeft te maken met uh, het, uh, hoe ze S- het water tot zich namen. Someone might say, how could God Test them over how they drink water, whether he's going to use or not use them. Soms vraag je hoe kan God het volk testen hoe zij hun water te drinken. Do you know how they drank water in the time of Gideon? Weet u hoe zij het water dronken in de tijd van de profeet Gideon? They drank water in two different ways. Ze dronken het water op twee verschillende manieren. Do you know that when God was taking them to go and fight the battle, there was almost 32,000 of them. Toen God hen bewoog om naar het oorlog te gaan, waren ze met 30.000 man. En God had made a rule, the, the weirdest rule any nation could have. En God maakte een regel, zoals het zou moeten zijn. That before a battle, zij bewijst zich voor de oorlog. That the captains, the leaders, the ministers were to stand up. En de leiders behoorden hiervoor op te staan. And they were to say just before a battle. Dus net vlak voordat de oorlog begon. That whoever is fearful amongst you go home. Dus werd gezegd voor degene die vrees kunnen beter naar huis gaan. Whoever has just married a wife, go home. Die al getrouwd is, keer terug naar uw vrouw. Whoever has just built a house, go home. Wie bezig met zijn huis te bouwen, ga naar huis. And I'm telling you, many a people, as the, 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 the minister would shout out these words just before battle, their hearts would rejoice. Ik zeg dat degene die klaar is voor de, <laughs> they, they voor de ministry, die like moet er juist enthousiast zijn en klaar zijn voor dit werk. There you, you could see your opponents just on the distance and many of their hearts trembled. Zij die een uh, vijand op af zien, die gaan al trillen van de angst. And I tell you friends, ik that when we are standing as watchmen on the walls of Zion, I can tell you there's a battle ahead of us. So ik zeg je, als u daar staat, dat is altijd een oorlog die voor ons staat. And God wants us to know if there's anything, anything that's more important than fighting his battles, we might as well go home. Dus God wil en is duidelijk in, voor geen, zij die niet klaar zijn voor de oorlog... Kunnen we terugkeren. In de final battle that God put in together, the final army. In het uiteindelijke oorlog met het met de, met de huidige leger, uiteindelijke leger. He is looking for people whose hearts are fully dedicated in one great purpose. Hij is op zoek alleen naar mensen die voor één punt uh, toegewijd zijn. That is finishing the work. Dat is het werk voltooien. If there is anything more important in our lives. Als er één punt dat is heel belangrijk is in je leven. Whether it's a job. Of het jouw werk is. Whether it's your children. Of het betreft je kinderen. Whether it's your business. Of het gaat om jouw zaken. Whatever it is that occupies your mind more than the great object of God finishing the work. Wat het ook is mag zijn dat jou bezighoudt dan het werk wat voor God belangrijker is. God will lay you aside, friends. God zet je opzij, vrienden. A great shaking is soon to come to this movement. God op, een grote schudden zal komen in deze beweging. And I tell you none. Ik zeg u dat niemand, but those who have fully surrendered their hearts to Jesus is going to stand. Alleen zij die overgeven met een hart aan Jezus zullen staan. Someone might say that I've surrendered 90% of my life to Jesus. Soms zeg ik heb mijn leven voor 90% overgeven aan Jezus. Friends, you know that a 90% surrender is not sufficient enough to save you. Maar zij die ze daarvoor overgeven zijn niet uh, uh, specifiek daarvoor uh, klaargemaakt. I can show you publicly. Ik kan u zo in openbaar dat dat tonen. It only needs. It only needs. Het heeft je alleen maar nodig. One cherished sin in your life for you to be lost. Voor één enkele zonde om verloren te gaan. Come with me to Mark. The Lord speaking. I haven't even mentioned where we fully go in. The Lord speaking. Let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 10. Which book? Mark 10. Mark 10. Matthew or Romans? Mark. 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 Sorry, Mark. Mark. Mark 10. Mark 10. Mark is 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark is hoofdstuk 10. And now, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read the entire ch- way I want us to read. But Mark 10, we all in Mark 10. Chapter 17. Mark 10, 17. Mark 10, 17. Uh, verse 17. I want you to see the Bible. We all know the story of the rich young ruler. Ik wil u dus meenemen naar het verhaal van de jonge, uh, rijke jongeling. Yes, he came to Jesus and he said, "Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life?" Hij komt tot Jezus en zegt, "Wat moet ik doen om een eeuwig leven te kunnen uh, ontvangen?" Now the fact that you hear, I can almost it's an echo of your heart's cry, Lord, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Het gaat om wat doet je hart om voor het eeuwige leven te, te mogen 
ontvangen. That's exactly why you, yeah, you want special instruction on how to get to heaven. Dat is waarom je bent om te weten hoe kan me voorbereiden voor de hemel. Your heart is in the right place just as the rich young ruler. Je hart is net op de juiste plek als met die rijke jongeling in de Bijbel. You are seeking to understand how to get to heaven. Je bent op zoek om te weten hoe kom ik dus naar de hemel. But desires for goodness and holiness in and of itself is not sufficient enough, sufficient enough to save you. Maar het verlangen voor heiligheid en uh, 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 gered worden is niet voldoende. In Step to Christ, page 47. In Schreden van Christus, uh, pagina 17. We are told that many will be lost whilst is, hoping and desiring to be Christians. Wat gezegd is, zijn ze schreden die ze verlangen om gered te worden door hoop en verlangen? She says, she continues to say that desires for goodness and holiness are right as far as they go. Dat het verlangen van uh, hoop en uh, goedheid uh, verloren zullen gaan. But if you stop here, they will avail nothing. But if you, as you stop, they if you stop here, I mean you just have desires for goodness and holiness, but it just stops there. She says it will avail nothing. Die zal dus falen als je dus, uh, blijft staan voor het hoop en verlangen om gered te worden. So friends, the fact that we hear, dus het feit dat we hier zijn. This is an opportunity to hear what God has to say. Is een gelegenheid om Gods stem te mogen horen wat Hij tot u zegt. But more than hearing what God has to say. Maar het is meer te weten wat wat de God tegen mij zeggen. We have to go beyond what Israel done of old. We moeten verder gaan naar wat waar Israël heeft gefaald. We are told in Ezekiel that God said to Ezekiel that these people Ezekiel come to you for they come to you to hear your words because you as one that plays lovely music for them. Because in Zegen heeft God gezegd dat het volk klaar moet zijn uh, met betrekking tot de muziek om zich klaar te maken. They love to hear what you say. Ze moeten klaar zijn om te horen wat, tot, wat gij tot u zegt. But they are unwilling to do what I say through you. Maar ze zijn onwillend om te doen wat er tegen hen wordt gezegd door de Heer. Friends, when heaven invites us to repent, let us not slight it. Vrienden zijn uitgevallen om klaar te zijn, hoe wij om te, uh, in berouw klaar te kunnen staan voor hem. When heaven touches a cherished sin in your life, do not cherish it. Wanneer de hemel je aanraakt voor zonde, moet je er niet uh, uh, in conflict raken. We are told that sin, however small it may be esteemed, can be indulged only at the peril of infinite loss. Dus één kleine zonde kan al uh, goed zijn om verloren te gaan. And friends, I know there's only one remedy for sin. Er is maar één remedie voor uh, verlossing van je zonde. It's the man of Calvary. Is de man aan het kruis. There is no other remedy. Er is geen andere remedie. We are told in volume 1 of the testimony is 158. In de boek van Testimony, volume 1. 158. Testimonies for the church, volume 1. 158. Thuis voor de kerk, volume 1. Inspiration says, there is a remedy for the sin sick soul. De remedie voor de zonde van de mens. And she says that remedy. Die remedie. Is found. Is gevonden. In Jesus precious Savior. In Jezus onze zalig maken. Friends, the only motive strong enough to keep us away from sin is love. En dat is de enige manier dat we dus niet worden geaccepteerd door onze zonden. And do you know, friends, I tell you that even the angels are safe from apostasy because of Calvary. En ook de engels hebben dat ervaren hoe de man van aan de kruis dat heeft moeten doorstaan. And it is only Calvary that can truly break the connection we still have with sin. Alleen het kruis kan ons verbinden aan onze ja, redding. Now, once as we see Mark chapter 10. We gaan nu naar uh, Mark 10, uh, hoofdstuk 10. Mark is hoofdstuk 10. Remember, Jesus said to the rich young ruler that um, keep the commandments. Because he asked, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, keep the commandments. Hij zegt, u weet dat daar staat dat Jezus zegt, u moet de gebonen gods onderhouden. He said, all these from my youth I've kept. What lack I yet? Sorry, yeah. All these I've kept from my youth. What lack I yet? Dat heb ik al van mijn jeugd al gedaan, dus wat houdt me nog tegen? And I want you to see, as Jesus looked upon him, Jesus' heart, we are told in inspiration, was moved with compassion. En Jezus bewogen door uh, zijn hart voor deze jonge man. And as Jesus looked upon him, en Jezus zo naar hem kijkt, Jesus saw there was one cherished sin in his life. Hij zag dat er maar één zonde die hij nog koestert. Now hear me carefully, I never say five cherished sins. Hij zegt, ik praat niet over vijf zonden. Someone says, how do you know that Jesus saw there was only one wrong thing in his life? Ik zeg, hoe kan je weten dat Jezus maar ook kijkt naar die ene zonde in die man? That would keep him out of the kingdom. Dat hem weghoudt van het koninkrijk. I want you to see the Bible. Ik wil u brengen in de Bijbel. So I'll just read English. Oké. Okay. It says in Mark chapter 10, verse um, 20 and 21. In verse 21 and 22 in Mark 10. 
And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these I have observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, Five things thou lackest, go. Uh, am I, uh, must I read that again? It says, three things thou lackest. One thing thou lackest. What did Jesus see was sufficient enough to keep this young man out of the kingdom? Five things, right? Jesus, five things that do zijn om gered te worden? It was one thing. Het om één ding. One thing. Eén ding. Friends. Vrienden. I believe Jesus is returning in this generation. I'm fully convinced of it. Ik ben, ik ben vol vertrouwd dat Jezus nu ons aanspreekt als deze, voor deze generatie. I believe we are the final generation. Ik geloof dat wij de laatste generatie zijn. I believe. Ik geloof. That will be a divine mercy and I truly believe this. Dat zal een goddelijke uh, uh, divine, uh, genade divine zijn. Mercy. For, to? Divine mercy. Goddelijke genade. That if we can go through 2025 without seeing a Sunday law. So, if we can go through the year 2025 without seeing a Sunday law. Als we dus gaan tot de 20, sorry, 20, 2025. 20, 20, 2025. That's next year. The next year. Next year. Oh, next year. Yeah. In 2025. Yes. If you knew what inspiration says, you know what you would be praying today. Als je weet dat inspiratie zegt dat je moet inspireren om te doen wat je moet doen. If you knew and understood the condition we must be found in to meet the coming crisis. If you weet, als je weet dat je moet klaar zijn voor de uh, uh, tweede komst van Jezus. Inspiration said we would be praying and pleading with God to give us a few more years of grace. Inspiratie zegt dat we moeten bidden en pleiten voor dat we klaar zijn voor zijn komst. A few more years of grace, not to play with sin, but to develop character to meet him in peace. Een paar jaar die we het hebben om niet te, om te pleiten en niet te spelen met de zon die we nog hebben om klaar te zijn. Before we actually, I never introduced. This has nothing to do with our study. Het heeft niets te maken met ons team, maar het is gewoon een introductie. I, I don't know how we got here. Ik weet niet hoe tot hier kwam. I don't know how we got here. But those who can, let us reverently kneel. Let us reverently kneel and get into our study. Laten we samen bidden. Ja. Our kind and loving Father, onze vriendelijke uh, liefhebbende Vader, please may you be with us now as we open up your word. Alsjeblieft wees met ons als we uw woord openen. We come before you with much humility of heart, Father. We komen met uh, met uh, uh, nederigheid tot u, Vader. Because we realize our great need of Jesus and our great need of you. Want heb je nodig, Vader, in uw zoon Jezus Christus? Father, we know our only hope of heaven, our only hope of salvation is found in looking to Calvary. Vader, we weten dat wij uh, dat de uh, hoop op verlossing is gevonden in aan de man aan het kruis. Please may you glorify your son Jesus. Wilt u zoon Jezus verheerlijken? Please may you give us new glimpses of your love. Help ons een, een, een nieuwe reiniging van uw liefde. And please may you draw our hearts closer to you Father and away from this world and sin. En wilt u ons uh, dicht bij u brengen dat wij ver afkomen van deze wereld? Please bless us now and abide with us. Als we ons Vader door uw woord. For I ask this humbly in Jesus' name. Vraag wij in alle nederigheid in Jezus' naam. Amen. 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 Come with me in your Bible to Revelation chapter 18. We gaan openbaar in 18. Revelation chapter 18. Openbaar in 18. 18. What we're going to be looking at, as I said, is the loud cry in its prophetic time zone. We gaan kijken naar de luide roep op een pro- in de profetische tijdslijn. The loud cry tijdzone. in its prophetic time zone. De, lu- de luide roep in de profet- profetische tijdszone. Then we want to look at 1888, the Kijk, history of 1888. Kijken naar de geschiedenis van 1888. And then we want to look at the consequences of the rejection of the 1888 message. En naar de gevolgen van de afwijzing van deze boodschap. Which was the alpha. Welk is de alpha? And then eventually the omega walked into the church. En uiteindelijk de omega dat is binnengewandeld in de kerk. So this is what we want to look at. Dus uh, luister je uh, heel goed? The prophetic time zone of the loud cry, 1888 history, and the alpha and the omega of apostasy. Om drie punten, de luide cry in de profetische tijdzone, de 88 boodschap, history, boodschap, uh, geschiedenis, en de alpha omega, afvalligheid. Each of these would require each study for itself. Elk punt heeft zijn eigen studie. 
but we're trying to squash it in so we're going to leave out some history or much history we're leaving out and then the alpha and omega we will not be able to really get in very deep into it. But we're going to shed some light on it, give an overview of it and you can go study further. We're in Revelation Revelations chapter 18. In Openbaring 18. Revelations the 18th chapter. Hoofdstuk 18 van Openbaringen. Now I want to ask a question. We in Revelation chapter 18. We are told yesterday, or we read yesterday. En, uh, gisteren hebben we dat ook uh, behandeld en ook de vraag gesteld over dit hoofdstuk. Does anybody remember what does inspiration say? Kan iemand nog herinneren wat inspiratie zei? I should let me rephrase that question. Laat me opnieuw die zin. Uh, oh sorry. <laughs> When does the loud cry come? When is all the louder roep uh, komen? Yeah, I, 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 now remember at the school of the, where are we at the school of the prophets? We zijn nu in de profetenschool. They were pious, intelligent and studious. Dat zijn studenten. So look, look at your notes if you have to look at your Kijk notes. Kijk naar de notitie van gisteren wat u dan hebt uh, opgeschreven. Can, can you tell me when does the loud cry begin? Kun je dat zeggen wanneer? Because I read the quotation in both sessions. Want ik heb het in twee sessies behandeld over now, de, some, it's almost a, it's not a tricky question, but some people can get confused. When does the loud cry begin? Het is kan het schrik vast zijn, maar het is echt de vraag. Wanneer zal het aanvangen de luide roep? Okay, thank you, sister. Okay, okay, okay. We will we'll, we'll receive that. We'll receive that. We we'll receive that. Revelation chapter 18. We're going to see what you're saying. We're going to see Bible for that. We zullen Bible zien. That's Bible. Wat de Bijbel zegt. That's Bible what you just said. Dit is Now, Bijbel wat je zegt. God has given us some light. God geeft ons wat licht. To the spirit licht. of prophecy. Ten aanzien van de profetie. Now listen to the quotation. Now listen to this quote. Selected messages book 1 362. Selected messages book 1. 1. 1. 362. Pagina 386. She says the time of test is just upon us. Uh, ze zegt de time. Time of test. Test. De, 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 de tijd van uh, test uh, is uh, in aankomst. What is the test she's referring to? What, what is the test that we're going to meet when she says the time of test is just upon us? The Sunday law. The sun is it? Oh, okay. okay. So, we, we, when she says that the time of test, time of test, the prophet always refers to the Sunday law. The Sunday law. So, she says the time of test is just upon us. Dus de tijd van de test is voor ons. Now listen to what she says precies the time of test. Luister wat ze zegt over de exacte moment van de tijd van test. She says the time of test is just upon us for the loud cry of the third angel has already begun. Ze zegt dat de engel dat al mee is aangevangen voor de luide roep aan te kondigen. So she says that the time of test is upon us. Dus de tijd van test is voor ons. Meaning that the test is just before us. Dat de, de tijd van test staat voor ons. But then she says that the loud cry has already begun. Maar ze zegt ook dat de roep al is begonnen. So I'm asking you the question, what comes first? Stel de vraag, wat komt eerst? The loud cry. It de, comes de luide roep. first. But now I want to say this, it's not, the, it's not the loud cry in its, uh, in its fullness. It is not the loud cry in its fullness. The loud cry, have you ever heard the phrase that she says that the loud cry of the third angel will, she says the, the message of the third angel will swell into a loud cry. She says that the message of the loud cry of the third angel is, so, yeah. So the message, The loud cry actually begins before the National Sunday Law. This is where the loud cry starts. The loud cry begins vooraf aan de, de, de zondagswet. But it's not in its entirety, it's not in its fullness. It's not in its fullness. But it's only after the National Sunday Law. Het is dus vaak dat wanneer de zondagswet aankomt. That the loud cry in its fullness, I can say, in its fullness takes place. Dat kan zeggen dat de luide cry dan pas in haar volheid zal uh, gestalte geven. Are we understanding so far, friends? I want to show you this publicly. I just shared selected messages book one. Op op het bord? Let's see how the Bible pictures this thing. Laten we kijken wat de Bijbel daarover zegt. Revelation chapter 18. Openbaar in hoofdstuk 18. This is the final message. There's no other angel sent to warn the guilty inhabitants of planet Earth. Dit is de laatste boodschap uh, om die te brengen aan deze wereld door de engel. Some call this the fourth angel. Sommigen noemen dat de derde engel. But this angel's mission. De vierde engel, sorry. Fourth. fourth de vierde angel. engel, ja. But this angel is to unite and give power to the third angel. Deze engel die uh, verbindt zich aan de uh, boodschap en 
van de derde engel. Now I want us to look at this angel. Dus kijken naar de engel, deze engel. Revelations 18 vers 1. Op maar 18 vers 1. So I'm just going to read English. Okay. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. Now there's two key phrases there. Er zijn hier twee uh, uh, versen zeg maar, korte versen. It mentions that when this angel comes down uh, in zich uh, voorzit als de engel naar beneden daalt. That he comes down with great power. Hij naar de, na, daalt neder met grote kracht. Do you know what is this great power that he's coming down with? Weet je wat het betekent die grote kracht die naar beneden komt? That this whatever is coming with great power but it says that he's also coming with light. Maar niet alleen met kracht, maar ook met licht. That the whole earth is going to be lightened. Het zal worden uh, uh, verlicht. Now, when somebody talks about light, what are they referring to? If someone says, I got light here for you. Als iemand zegt, ik zal licht erop brengen, wat wat dan bedoel? If you in church and they say, you know what, I found some a precious light here. What, 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 what are they referring to? Truth. Wat wij zeggen, naar de waarheid. So, ja. the angels coming down with what? If it says that the whole earth is going to be light, and what is he coming down with? Dus hij vliegt ons met wat? He's coming down with a special message of truth. Hij komt met speciale boodschap van de waarheid. Mm. So, we want to look at what is this truth or this light that is coming down with, and what's this power? Dus wat is die waarheid, het licht, door die kracht? But also the timing is found in Revelation 18 of when he comes down and what is limits of war in the world. Het maakt met de tijdstijd waar het wat ja bepaalt hoe het wordt gebracht. I'm going to just put this chart very quickly here. And inside this chart I want us to see where we would place or where does the angel come down. So I'm going to just put your 1844, I'm going to put your NSL and I'm going to put COP. You know what COP stands for? Six. Close of probation. Ik schets u dus oh, de, de, de sluit van de genade tijd. I'm going to read and then I want you to tell me when does this angel of Revelation 18 come down. Dus ik lees uit de Bijbel, gaat u zien op deze schets hoe dat zich uh, ontpopt. Now, when this angel comes down to lighten the earth with his glory. En een engel naar beneden daalt en de uh, aarde verlicht door zijn heerlijkheid. God's church is already shaken. Zal Gods volk al worden geschud. You say, how do I know that? Because when we look at the power, we're going to see God's church is already shaken. Denk je, kijk naar de kracht en dat het daardoor niet te maken heeft. The tears have already been removed out of the church. Het is al lang weggehaald uit de kerk. And what remains is only wheat. Wat blijft is de wat only wheat. Only wheat. Only het zaad. Now, I want us to look at Revelation 18. Let's go to Mark 18. Verse 2: He cries that Babylon has fallen, has fallen, completely fallen. The verse that says that Babylon is gevallen, compleet gevallen. So I'll just read verse 3. For all nations, the, this, is the, this is the message. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. Now I'm going to stop there. Ik stop dus daar in wat ik heb gelezen uit vers 3. It says all nations are drunk by the wrath of, uh, of a fornication. Who is the her that's been referred to as Babylon? Je ziet dat het volk heeft gedronken uit de wijn des torens. En wie zijn ha- die volken? How many nations are drunk with the wine of Babylon? Hoeveel naast van so de wijn van Babylon? When this angel comes down, are some of the nations drunk or all the nations drunk? Zijn, is het maar één of twee, zijn alle volken dronken van deze wijn? Van de... So when this angel comes down, it says all, not I never say that Bible says all nations are drunk. De engel nee, dat betreft alle volken zijn dronken. Drunk with what? Waarvan zijn ze dronken wine. dan? Wine. Van de wijn. What is that false doctrine? But what false, false doctrine? It's a specific false doctrine. It is alleen maar false leer. Come with me to chapter 17. Laten we teruggaan naar hoofdstuk 17. Verse 2. What is Babylon giving to, to the world to drink? I'm not going to read it. You tell me in verse 2. 17, 2. You can tell that to me in verse 2. What does that mean? Sorry? Idolatry. Idol- but, yeah, amen? But I'm saying, what, what does it say there? What does that mean? What, what is she giving them to drink? What gives uh, the folk to drink? Wine, 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 right? It's wine. Now, please. Uh, alsjeblieft. The Bible is going to interpret the wine for us. We don't have to guess. The Bible interpreted that the the wine is of the false leer. So this woman is sitting on a piece with a cup in her hand and she's giving wine. Dus de vrouw zit op de deze en overhandigt de wijn. The Bible is now going to interpret for us the wine. De Bible uh, interpreteert dus dat het de wijn is die we ontvangen. It's going to tell us what's inside the cup. Yes, it's wine. Het telt ons dat het dat in de, de kop wijn zit, dat is wijn. But it's going to interpret, give us another name for what's inside the cup. Het geeft een andere interpretatie van wat er sta- zit in die kop, wat de wijn betreft. Look at verse 4. Kijk naar vers 4. 
And the woman, I'll just read English. Yeah. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Now watch this part. Having a golden cup in her hand full of wine. What does it say? Full of what? Full of abominations and filthiness of a fornication. So what is another name for wine? What's another name for wine? Abominations. So uh, wine is synonymous they? with abominations. So my question, what is this, this wine or these abominations? What is this event? What is this? Uh, uh, it's false right? doctrine. But remember, I want you to think with me. If we had time, I would study every abomination. The Bible classes as abomination. And we'll show you that the Roman Catholic teaches these doctrines. I want that you just look at the doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church from this prophecy. What you said, sister? It's homosexuality. Almost, okay, oh, that's one of it. Het gaat ook over homoseksualiteit. Friends, you know the answer to this question. You weet you know the answer to deze vraag, dat weet u. Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel hoofdstuk 8. 16, 16, 17. Uh, hoofdstuk 8 vers. Remember, God says to Ezekiel, I'm going to show you the greatest of all abominations. God zegt tegen Ezekiel, ik zal u laten zien. Uh, al die hoerij van and het volk. Ezekiel thought what in his mind could be greater than all what God has already showed me. En hij zegt, wat kan God nog mijn leert zien dan wat al aanwezig in bij dat volk? And God says, Ezekiel, look at the elders. En de Heer zegt, kijk naar de ouderlingen. There were five and twenty of them. Five and twenty-five. Er waren iets van vijf en twintig van hen. What they are back towards the temple of the Lord and they are faced towards the sun and they worship the sun. Terwijl daar bij de tempel staan, waar ze de zon aan het aanbidden. God called sun worship the greatest of all abominations. Zo so God uh, legt zijn uh, ganse over dit volk door een hoererij. Now that is Ezekiel 8, 15, 16, 17. Dat is Ezekiel 8, vers 15, 16 en 17. So when it says all nations have drunk of the wine of Babylon, when Revelation 18, the loud cry message comes. Dus de op 18 laat toe dat de luide roep wordt luide roep wordt verkondigd. And he announces when he comes down, every nation has now drunk with the wine of Babylon. Babylon. De engel deed is zijn alle volken dronken van de wijn van Babylon. Question: What does Vraag that is, mean about every nation? What have they just done? Wat betekent dat elke volk? Wat heeft de, wat, wat is gebeurd? Sorry, what's that? Sunday. They have enforced Sunday law. Ze hebben dus de zondagswet dus uh, gedwongen om te uit te voeren. So based on what I've just read now. Dus wat ik nu heb gelezen gebaseerd op where, de Bijbel. Where would you place the loud cry on this chart based on just what, the fact that when he comes down he says all nations are drunk. Dus wat zegt de Bijbel hier expliciet a, over? And abominations is sun worship. Sunday worship. Where would en you gaat place the loud cry? Based on what we've just read. Gebaseerd op wat we net hebben gelezen. Where would you place the loud cry? Waar kun je het plaatsen op deze tijdslijn? <laughs> okay, I see we confused. Friends, this is simple. Forget everything I'm just saying. I'm just saying, let's, let's zoom in on Bible. We gaan ons inzoomen op het woord. Bible says when he comes down. Dat zegt wanneer hij neder daalt. He says all nations are drunk. Alle volken zijn dronken. All nations, when he comes with his message, he's giving us the time zone. Wanneer hij komt met deze boodschap, komen we in die tijdzone. He says all nations now have passed the Sunday law. Alle volken zullen dus ook met de zondagsweg te maken hebben. So where would you place the loud cry yeah, in its fullest sense? Dus waar zullen de volle van de loude uit plaatsen op deze? Uh, thank you, sister. Thank you so much. So the loud cry in its fullness. De luide roep in zijn volheid. Takes place from the National Sunday Law after the Sunday Law is enforced. America is to first force it and the nation soon soon follows suit. Zal dus uh, beginnen bij de zondagswet. This is the period of the loud cry. Dit is de, de, de luide roep die dus aanvangt. Do you know what comes after the close of probation? Wat, wat er komt daarna dan na de uh, Thank you so much. Tijd? It's the plagues. It's the plagues. Now. Dat zijn de zeven plagen. Let's see the time zone of the loud cry. We know Kijk, it comes after, zone. after the Sunday law in its fullest sense. Met de When does it stop? En wanneer zal dat stoppen? Back to chapter 18. Gaan we terug naar openbaring 18. Look at verse 4. Kijk naar vers 4. Vers 4 says... And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Revelation 18:4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that are in Babylon, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you not, and and that he receive not of her plagues. So the message is that the loud cry message is that those who are in Babylon come out before I pour the plagues. Boze is voor hen die dus uit Babylon verlaten. Uh, om hen dus daaruit te trekken. That means that the loud cry starts after the National Sunday Law in its fullest sense. And it continues and stops just before the what? 
Dus luid de, de Laude Hoek begint dus in de volheid van, uh, van haar boodschap bij de zondagswerk en het eindigt bij het begin van de zeven plagen. It's just before the plagues. Het is net voorafgaand aan de zeven plagen. Because when the plagues come, probation is closed. Wanneer ze plagen komen, is ook de sluiting van de genadetijd. So this is the time zone of the loud cry. Dus dat is de tijdzone van de luide roep. It starts in the church before het, the Sunday law. Het begint in onze kerk voordat de zondagswet aanvangt. After the Sunday law, it goes to the world. Of wanneer de zondagswet naar de wereld toe gaat. God first pleads with his people leading up to the Sunday law. Dus God leidt zijn people naar de zondagswet. When the Sunday law is passed. Wanneer de zonswet wordt ge, 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 geforceerd. God no longer pleads with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Zal God niet alleen uh, zijn voor zijn volk, de Seventh-day Adventisten. He now pleads with the world. Hij is nu met de wereld bezig. With those who have been faithful in the light of the loud cry leading up to the Sunday law. Voor hen aan de licht van de luide roep voor, om uh, ja, tot God te komen. I'm not going to spend time with the power and the light because we need to get into the history. Ik zal niet meer tijd besteden aan de aan de kracht I'm going to just tell you this. Ik zal je alleen maar dit. Of that the power is actually representing the latter rain. That the power uh, refereert eigenlijk naar de late regen. Or the Holy Spirit, however you want to put it. Now, I'm going to just give you two verses very quickly. Ik twee versen heel snel. Come with me in your Bible to Micah very quickly and see where does power come from. Dan gaan we naar which book? Micah, Micah, chapter 3. Oh, Micha. Micah. Sorry. Micah. Ja. Chapter 3. Micah 3, I want us to see Micah chapter 3 verse 8. Micha hoofdstuk 3. It says in Micah chapter 3 verse 8. In Micha 3 verse 8 staat. But truly I am full. Are we all there friends? Micah 3 verse 8. Micha, Micha 3 verse 8. It says but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. Let's stop there. We stoppen daar in dat zinnetje van vers Where 8. Where does power come from? It says but truly I am full of power. By the spirit of the Lord. Het zegt staat, ik ben vol kracht van de geest des Heren. So power based on the Bible comes from the spirit of the Lord. Dus power gebaseerd wat in de Bijbel staat is, Let is me give you van a de geest van de Heer. We can give many witnesses. I'm giving you one more witness. Uh, Luke chapter 4. Luke 4 verse 14. I'm just going to read it very quick because of time so we can move Luke on. Luke 4 verse 14. It says in Luke 4 14. And Jesus, Luke chapter 4 verse 14. And Jesus returned... In the power of the spirit. So where does power come from? Dus waar komt de kracht it comes from the spirit. De geest van de Heer. So we can rightfully say it's only after the national Sunday law in its fully, fullest sense under the loud cry the Holy Spirit is poured out in power. Dus de geest zal met volheid worden uitgegoten. We call that the latter rain as seven day adventures. Wat wij noemen als adventisten de late regen. Now, what is the message? What is the message? What is this light? What is this truth? What is the message? Wat is dan de boodschap? Het licht, de waarheid. Let's see Psalms 37. We've read this verse. I think this is about my fourth or third time. Psalms 37. Psalm 37. What is the light that is to lighten the whole earth? Psalms 37. What message is it? Welke boodschap is daar te vinden? It says in Psalms 37. Zegt in Psalm 37. Verse 6. Vers 6. Watch what's the light. Let op het licht. It says, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. En zal uw gerechtigheid doen voortkomen als het licht. What does the Bible refer to as light? Wat wijst de Bijbel naartoe met het licht? Psalms 97:11. Psalm 97:11. En 97:11. It says, light is sown for the righteous. Licht is voor de rechtvaardigen. So the final message that's going to lighten the earth with the glory of God is specifically the message of righteousness by faith. Dus het licht van de, de boodschap is specifiek de boodschap van righteousness by faith. Gerechtvaardigd door het geloof. It's going to be a revelation of the matchless charms of Jesus. Een openbaring van uh, Je- uh, Jesus. The matchless charms of Jesus. De, de boodschap van Jezus. It's going to be a revelation as Ellen White refers to it as. Um, justification by faith and what Jesus has accomplished for us through his death. Het zal maar zijn wat Elewaas zegt over rechtvaardigheid door het geloof. So this is the church we looked at many, many times. Now, friends, I emphasize one more time. Ik benadig nog nog voor, benadig nog opnieuw. Okay, the quotation is cut. But can you tell me what page is this? If those who can, on the laptop. What book? That I might know him? Page? 350. 
I want you to see what the prophet says. She says, let none follow the example of the foolish versions and think that it'll be safe to wait until the crisis before gaining a preparation of character to stand in that time. Now listen to the final word she says. Kijk naar de laatste woorden wat zij zegt. It will be too late to seek the righteousness of Christ when the guests are called in and examined. Het zal te laat zijn om op zoek te zijn naar de gerechtvaardigheid van Christus wanneer de gasten worden geroepen om te worden getoetst. When the national Sunday law is enforced. Wanneer de zonneswet wordt geforceerd, we shift from the judgment of the dead to the judgment of the living. Zullen van de orde van de do- uh, uh, doden overgaan naar de levenden? We are told in volume 6 of the testimonies for the church. In het boek de getuigenis voor de kerk. Page 130. Uh, pagina 100. 130. 130. We are told now when the great work of judging the living is about to begin. Is er verteld dat het werk van de rechtvaardigen nu uh, Staat te beginnen. Shall we allow unsanctified ambition to take possession of our hearts? Zullen we ons toelaten om ons hart en klaar te maken voor dit gebeuren? And lead us to neglect the preparation so needful at this time of peril. Dat dat ook klaar. Sorry. Uh. Uh, shall we? Shall it lead us to neglect the work of preparation? Dat ons zal leiden voor het werk van voorbereiding. At this time of peril. In deze tijd van peril. 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 Danger. Danger. Ja, en, ja. ja, gevaar. Oh, danger, sorry. Ja. So she, she is specifically re- referring to the judgment of the living. Dus als we kijken naar het oordeel van de doden. And watch what she does. En kijkt u daar wat er gebeurt. In the very next sentence. In de, in de eerste volgende gebeurtenis. She says in every case the decision is to be made. In elk caso dat de, uh, de besluit is genomen. Whether. Whether. Of, whether of, of. We shall receive the seal of God so for the mark of the beast and his image. So ontvangen de seal van God of het merk van het beest. Did you catch what event the prophet linked to the judgment of the living? Misschien wat de profeet bedoelt de link naar de uh, orde van de levenden. She linked the mark of the beast crisis to the judgment of the living. Ze so linkt dus de mark van het beest naar de orde van de levenden. When uh, America passes a Sunday law. When um, America passes a Sunday law. America, United States. Wanneer Amerika dus met de zonnes zit. That's an indication to us Jesus has stopped his work of judging the living. Is een indicatie dat Jezus stopt met de orde van de levenden. And is now investigating the... the no, sorry, I am, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. Yeah. He has stopped investigating the dead. Hij stopt het onderzoek van de doden. And is now investigating the living. Is nou on, uh, aan het onderzoeken van de levenden. Someone says, how do you... I just share the quotation. Ik heb gewoon een quote, een quote met u gedeeld. But more than that. Maar meer dan dat. How would God place his seal upon you if he does not investigate you? Hoe zal God dat zich opleggen als u niet bent blootgesteld aan het onderzoek? Would the angel be putting the seal on dead people or living people? Zal de engel dan de zegen leggen op de doden en de levenden? So before he puts his seal on a living person, would there be an investigation? Dus voordat hij zich legt op zijn dierbaar, zal hij eerst niet het onderzoek laten beginnen? There has to be an investigation. Dat zal ons moeten plaatsvinden. So when the ceiling commences, we have now shifted from the dead to the living. Dus als de zeeg komt, moeten we al worden geschift tussen leven en doden. The ceiling starts at the passing of the Sunday law. De zeeg begint wanneer de zonneswet stopt. That's Ezekiel chapter 8, Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel 8 en 9 is daar heel duidelijk over. Ezekiel 8 sun worship. Ezekiel 8 is zon aanbidding. Ezekiel 9 ceiling. Als je nee gaat over de verzegeling. Seven Bible Commentary 976 affirms that. In het boek van Bijbelcommentaar volume 7. We are told that the great and final test. Er is al gezegd dat de, de, de uiteindelijke test. Which is the Sunday law. Met betrekking tot de zondagswet. Commences the sealing. Uh, Brengt ons naar de verzegeling. So friends. Er begint de verzegeling. So. It's at the national Sunday law. Dat de. De nationale zondagswet. We have reached the limit for God's people. Bereiken we dus de, de limiet van Gods volk? Yesterday we showed you that a crisis is brewing next year. Gisteren had ik verteld over. A brewing, a crisis is brewing next year. Een crisis. Een crisis. zal dus uh, plaatsvinden. We showed that project 2025. Dat uh, dat gereveerd naar. Project 2025. Project nee. 
Dat was project 2025, volgend jaar, dus sorry. We showed you that Trump says that he's going to give power to Christianity. Trump zegt dat ze kracht geven aan de christendom. There's a new speaker of the house called Mike Johnson. Er is nieuwe gezegde over dit, dit gebeuren. And I, I wish we could have looked at that. Ik hoop dat we daar naartoe kunnen kijken. Based on the Bible, the Bible says that the Sunday law, it says that America will speak as a dragon. Gebeest op de Bijbel dat Amerika zal spreken als de draak. In Great Controversy, Ellen White says that the speaking of a nation. En bij, zoals wij zeggen in een Great Conflict, has, zal een volk zijn. Has to do with its legislative and judicial authorities. Sorry. Legislative and judicial authorities. Wetgevende, wetgevende macht. macht. Wetgevende macht, sorry, oké. Okay. Wetgevende macht. Do you know the legislative branch of America? What's the legislative branch of America? Legislative means where laws are made. Dat weet dat de wet zal worden uitgemaakt. Het, het congres. Dat is door het congres. So she says the Sunday law comes through congress. That's what she says in Great Controversy. Ze zegt het zal komen vanuit het congres. Now do you know who is the speaker of the house in congress? Wie zal dan spreken in het congres hierover? I, I, I wish I put it up. Ik hoop dat ik het hier heb kunnen uh, it's a neerzetten. Man, it's a man by the name of Mike Johnson. Have you ever heard of Mike Johnson? Heeft u gehoord over Mike Johnson? Some of us have heard of Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson? Mike, Mike Johnson says there's no such a thing as separation of church and state. Zegt er is geen voorbereiding voor hiervoor. Nee, hij zegt er is niets, er bestaat niet zoiets als scheiding van kerk en staat. Oh, sorry, juist, oké, okay, bedankt. Ja, yeah, there's no separation of church and state. Er is geen tussen kerk en staat. He said he believes. Hij zegt ik geloof that the church should influence the state. Dat de kerk zal de staat beïnvloeden. Are you seeing all the pieces of the puzzle coming together? Ziet al de puzzels die bij elkaar komen? Everything is set on the side of the enemy. Dat het uitstaan van de kant van de vijand. The only thing that is not set is us. Het enige wat nog niet gezegd is over ons. Do you know in the natural order of things? Dat in de natural natural order of things. Natuurlijke order? Ja. It seems. Het schijnt. It seems. Het schijnt. That God's on the losing side. Dat God aan de verliezende kant staat. Everything seems against God. Alles schijnt tegen God. Friends, te zijn. when you look at your own heart and you examine your heart, you say, Lord, this is opened. I don't know if you had it. Lord, how shall I? How would I get that seal? Hoe zal ik? How shall I? How shall I get the seal? Hoe zal ik dat komen? Hoe zal ik naar de hemel komen? Sorry, ja. When you look at your own heart and you look at our condition as a people, as a movement. Kijk naar je omstandigheden als als onze beweging. You can almost despair. You can only... Despair, agony, despair. Oh, you can, uh, one hope for it, despair, yeah. yeah. The odds seem to be against God. Het zijn dingen zijn die tegen God zijn. When you study the characteristics of the 144.000. Als we kijken naar de 144.000 met haar say, karakter. Where would the Lord even get one of them? Hoe zal God dan tot één van hen zijn? But God says he's going to get 144.000 of them. God zegt als er 144.000 zijn van hen. And I tell you, the way Satan's u. looking, he says this is an impossibility. Maar het is een onmogelijkheid wordt dan gezegd. But you know that God is going to produce these people. Maar God zal dit produceren, dit volk. And I want to be a part of them. Amen. Do you, do you, amen. Yeah. Amen. Now friends, briefly, briefly, we have to move quickly. Time is against us. We de, de tijd doorvliegen. Now, I want you to see this. This is Lost Events 209. This is? Lost Events, LDE 209. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, But they can see it. They, yeah, they can see it. You can place it on the screen. Lost Events 209. I want you to see that when the loud cry starts, remember how many phases of the loud cry? Now I have confidence before you answer. I have confidence. How many phases of the loud cry? I just, I, I've, I've, I've shared, I gave you a quotation, I gave Bible, so I have confidence. Let's get for trouble. Uh, uh, Okay, two, thank you. Two, two, two. Thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, but thanks for trying. So, there's two phases. The phases are divided up into which groups of people, which groups of people. Which, which groups? Adventists and then the world. For the Adventist church, when does it start? When is it start? More or less, where do we say? Not exact dates, but on events. Before which event does it start in the church? Wel gewis gaat in de kerk, dat zal stoppen. Before the Sunday law. Voor de zonnes, zonnes het aanvangt. When does it go to the world? Wanneer zal het komen naar de wereld? After the Sunday law. Na de zondagswet. After the Sunday law. Now I want to show you how the church receives the loud cry before the Sunday law. Ik wil nu laten zien hoe de kerk ontvangt met de zondagswet. There's many quotations. I took them out. I'm only going to read one. Er zijn een aantal quotes. Ik heb maar eentje hiervoor. The, op het scherm. The prophet's going to tell us now. De profeet zal ons zeggen. How the church receives the final message that prepares us for the Sunday law. Hoe de kerk de boodschap ontvangt dat ze klaarmaakt voor de zondagswet. 
So I'll just read. She says, there is to be in the Seventh-day Adventist Church a wonderful manifestation of the power of God. But it will not move upon those who have not humbled themselves before the Lord and opened the door of their hearts by confession and repentance. In the manifestation of that power, which lightens the earth with the glory of God. What message is that? The, the, the loud cry. The loud cry. She says, in the manifestation of that power, which is to lighten the earth with the glory of God. They, stop, they. Who's the they in the first sentence? Uh, but, but, who's, who's, who's the day in the first sentence? Who's the day? The seven Adventist churches, because she got their churches. She says, they will only see something which in their blindness they think dangerous. Something which will arouse their fears and they will brace themselves to resist it. Yeah. Are you seeing how the church was going to receive the last message of mercy? See how the church is going to rise is going to rise up in opposition to the message. De volgende opstand voor de opstand van de boodschap. En not just the message, but the messengers. Niet alleen de boodschap, maar ook de boodschappers. And this is going to cause a shaking inside the church before the Sunday Lord. Dat zal een schudding op voor zaken voor zondag zet. Are going to be are going to be um, developed within the church. Twee groepen in de ontwikkeling zullen dan gescheiden van elkaar. She says, I saw some with strong faith and agonizing cries pleading with God. Ik zag dat sommigen uh, 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 tot God pleiten met kracht. She says, some were careless and indifferent who do not participate in this agonizing and pleading. En anders zijn gewoon verschillig over deze boodschap. This is in the church just before the Sunday law. Dit is nu gaan in de kerk voor de zondagswet. Early writings 269. Eerste geschriften. On page 270. Uh, pagina 17. She says I asked the meaning of the shaking I had seen. Ze heeft gezegd ze zag de schudding gebeuren. I was shown it will be caused by the straight testimony called forth by the council of the true word. That's too much for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I asked. Ik denk. <laughs> ik vraag <ik>, haar. <laughs> I asked the meaning of the shaking I had seen. That the shudder that I have seen. And I was shown it will be caused by the counsel of the true witness to the little seer. Ik zal ze laten zien door de handbossige getuigenis. She says, those who embrace this message. Zij die dit boodschap omarmen. Will exalt the standard. Zullen staan daar, staan. Zullen zich verheffen, ja, juist. They will exalt the standard and pour forth the straight truth. En komen tot die waarheid. Some will not bear the straight testimony. Sommigen kunnen die waarheid niet aan, uh, aanvaarden. Te they, will, zien. they will rise up against it. Ze zullen opstaan en tegen die boodschap zijn. And this will cause a shaking amongst God's people. Dat zal zijn de boodschap, de schudden tussen Gods, in Gods volk, tussen Gods volk. So inside the church before the Sunday law we are to see the vision taking place. Dus uh, voordat het begint moeten we eens zien vanuit het visioen wat gebeurt in de kerk. The vision but also unity. Uh, niet alleen de visie maar ook de eenheid van de kerk. Those who are seeking for victory over sin would be pressing together. Dat zal uh, straks bij elkaar komen. Those who are indifferent and careless will be put aside by God. Zij die dus uh, uh, put aside. Zullen door God apart worden gezet? De ongehoorzaam worden apart gezet. Sorry. Ja. It's only at the Sunday law. Alleen door de zondagswet. That God is going to blow away. De God zal wegblazen. All the tears within His church. Wat hier zal, wat in kerk zal geplaatst worden. Het kast zal hij wegblazen van het koor. So I ja. conclude with the last part of this, 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 this paragraph. She says, because the Lord does not work according to their expectations and ide- ideal, they will oppose the work. Why, they say, should we not know the spirit of God when we have been in the work so many years? So this is their view. This is their view that because we have been in the church so many years, God should work through us. God zal nu in ons moeten werken. So we can see that when the message comes to the church prior to the national Sunday law, met betrekking tot de zondagswet, it's going to cause a shaking. Het zal dus worden de schudding. And the church is going to reject the loud cry. En de kerk zal dus de luide roep weigeren. Now I want us briefly to look at 1888 history. How much time do I have, Brother Lewis? Hoeveel tijd hebben we nog, Brother Lewis? <laughs> don't ask me that. No, don't tempt me, brother. <laughs> don't tempt me. <laughs> I give you now a maximum of 10 minutes. Okay. And then okay. After the potluck, you've got uh, more time. 
Okay, after the potluck, we got a different study. We have to look at the power of the gospel. Yeah. So, okay, it's fine. Give me 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes. It's fine. I'm going to try squash 1888 history in 10 minutes and the alpha and omega in 10 minutes. <laughs> We're going to try. We'll try. We'll try. Okay, maximum 20 minutes. Okay, Amen. thank you. Amen. Amen. Maximum. Amen. <laughs> So we are told, Father, please bless us as we continue. Please may our hearts truly be moved by the truth and may we be drawn closer to Jesus. We really need your spirit, Father. Please help us, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, do you know who these two men are? I got a picture Did they, of they say Jones. This is Jones and that's Wagner. Jones and Wagner. Now, I want you to see what the, the prophet of God had to say about these two men. Ik wil laten zien wat de profeet zegt tegen over deze twee mannen. She says the Lord in his great mercy sent a most precious message to his people through elders Wagner and Jones. This message was supreme more prominently before the world, the uplifted savior, the sacrifice for the sins of the old world. Now, why was this message so unique, which is still unique today? Waarom is dit zo uniek voor vandaag? Seven day Adventists after Ze zijn vaak 1844 Na. Na 1844. They began preaching the law, the law, the law. Gewoon alleen maar te praten over de wet, de wet en de wet. To a point where Jesus was left out of our doctrines. Om te zeggen dat Jezus eigenlijk uit hun doctrines ja, buiten staat. Adventists could meet anyone. Adventists kunnen iedereen ontmoeten. Whether Baptist, Jehovah's Witness, Lutheran, they could debate them and they were great debaters. So they can uh, dus uh, over de boodschap verkondigen aan de baptisten, aan de Jehovah getuigen. And every debate they won. En elk debat wonnen zij. To a point where our ministers started debating spiritualists, people that practice um, witchcraft, so to speak. Dat zij net als ja, heksen gewoon dus debatteren om zich te, te beoefenen. There was a man by the name of Moses Hull. Dat is een man, Moses Hall. You'll find in testimonies to the church volume 1, Ellen White's warning and rebukes and counsels to him. Met Ellen White laat zien wat hij gedaan heeft. Excellent minister. Dat is een hele buitengewone ministry. This man could debate people and this man would win almost every debate without a fail. Hij kon tegen elk persoon debatteren en hij elk debat. He was an speaker. Hij was een goede spreker. And he started debating the spiritualist... Um, um, People, he started debating him, and Ellen White warned him against us. And I started the debate. Yeah, I... But the man was so confident the that eventually, had, the man had so thought that finally, that he went to a house, a meeting of this group of um, spiritualists at, at, at their home. I went to a house where all the geestes were together. And he went alone when he was forbidden to do so. And he went to a house where all the geestes were together. And he went alone when he was forbidden to do so. Terwijl hij dus debatteerde waar aan een ministerie die yes, had gebed. He became so confident in his, in his own wisdom that he felt that he could meet the spiritualists without anyone else. Zij had vertrouwen in zijn eigen wijsheid dat hij niet zou kunnen verliezen van elke debat. This was one of our most eloquent ad, uh, advocates of our message, Moses Hall. Moses Hall is een van onze buitengewone advocaten in, in deze bediening. When, the, when that man left that house, when iemand het huis verlaat, that man became one of the greatest advocates of spiritualism. Als hij een grote advocate. Als het gaat om geestelijk te zijn. Nee, 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 nee. Occultisme, hij werd een van de. Hij werd een occultist. Oh, hij was ook. Oké, okay. hij verwerpt zijn occultisme. Ja. Bij de aanwezigen. So that's just a ja. history of Adventism. To a point, I should have showed you the picture. Ik zal dus op de scherm laten zien. There was two pictures. Actually, there was a picture presented before Ellen White. Er waren dus twee sprekers. Voor, And ja. on this picture, central to the picture. En dat was dus in het gezicht getoond. I want you to see the minds of Adventists back then. En je ziet de, de, de gedachten van Adventisten die er naar kijken. Central to that picture which Ellen White said this picture is not right. Focus op dit gezicht. Dat is niet waar. Central to the picture was Mount Sinai and everything else. There was Calvary there. There was Adam and Eve's fall. It was the whole plan of redemption was laid out on this picture. But central to this picture and the hugest part of it was Mount Sinai. Sister, that's it. <laughs> And Ellen White looked at the picture and she says this picture is incorrect. Zag naar het beeld en zegt dit is incorrect. This picture needs to be changed. Moet toch worden veranderd? And when they came again and they presented the next picture, do you know what was central and largest on the picture? Ze zal dus wat toevoegen aan het aan het beeld. Het kruis. 
I'm just showing you the mindset of Adventists back then. Ik laat u zien de, de, de gedachte gaf Adventisten toen in die tijd. What they looked at. Wat zij naar kijken. And what they zoomed. Now I'm not saying the, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we should lay aside the law. Never should we do that. Ik zeg dat zij het verkeerd zijn. But the law is not central. Maar de, de, de gewone waarden is de, toen de focus. It's Christ that is central. Maar Christus is onze centrum. Remove Christ and you can speak law all you want. You're never going to live a life of obedience. Als je Christus uit je leven zet, kun je praten over without, gehoorzaamheid. Without love. Zonder liefde. There's no obedience. Is er geen gehoorzaamheid. Jesus doesn't say keep my commandments. Never. Jezus zegt niet onthoud mijn geboden. He says if you love me. Als je mij lief heeft. Onthoud de geboden. Jesus knows that the only way we can truly obey is love. Jezus weet dat we alleen maar kunnen gehoorzaam door liefde. And what Calvary does as a man or a woman looks at Calvary. En als iemand kijkt naar het kruis. I'm telling you friends, I've Ik zal u vrienden. Hey man, I tell you. Do you know how many times I wept and I cried? Weet u dat ik zo vaak ik heb gehuild? And you, I'm telling you my the hatred that God would just bring in our heart towards sin. En dat ja. And even your own defects man, when you look at Calvary, there's nothing you can do but cry. Als je naar het kruis gaat, kun je niks doen, anders doen dan alleen maar huilen. To a point where I am, I am being very honest with you, and I tell you this. Ik ben nu echt heel eerlijk tegenover u wat ik vertel. I have told the Lord many a times, Lord. Ik heb vaak tegen u gezegd, Heer. I would prefer to die. Ik wil liever sterven. Than to live a life of sin. Dan een leven te leven van zonde. If you can see my path is going to be a lost path. Als je kijkt dat ik naar een pad bewandel, een pad van ja. I would not break your heart any more than what your heart has already been broken. Dat wat is al ge- ja. I, 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 I love you too much. Ik houd veel van u. To grant me more time in a life of sin. Om mij nog meer tijd te geven in een leven van zonde. I have told him that life is not worth living without you. Een leven is niet waard zonder Christus. And I've many a times I told him, Lord, it's best you put me to rest if my end result is sin. Ik heb vaak gezegd, breng me tot rust en dat ik een leven van zonde moet blijven leiden. What can bring a man or woman to a point where they're willing to die than to live a life of sin? Wat moet een persoon brengen tot een leven van zonde? Not that they're powerful and have strength to say I'm never going to sin. No, they know they're weak. Men weet dat we dat we zondaar zijn. But it's a love that can cause you to say, Lord, I don't want this thing no more. Dat is de liefde dat dat we niet meer willen zondigen. It can only be love. Het kan alleen maar liefde zijn. Now I want you to see what she says. Gaan we kijken wat ze zegt. She says that this message of Jones and Wagner was supreme more prominently before the world. The uplifted savior, the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. It presents a justification through faith in the surety and invited the people to receive the righteousness of Christ. Then want to receive the righteousness of Christ. What now is the result of this justification? It says which is made manifest in obedience to all the commandments of God. Can you see that righteousness, God's free gift of righteousness first comes and then it's a life of obedience. It's not obedience first and then righteousness. It's surrender first, his righteousness then obedience. Want dus is de rechtvaardigheid ontvangen om te komen tot die gehoorzaamheid. Now what does she call this message Jones and Wagner was bringing to the church? She says red words right at the bottom. It is the third angel's message which is to be proclaimed with a loud voice and attended with the outpouring. His spirit and a large measure. So what message is this? If she says it's the third angel's message which is proclaimed with a loud voice and it's accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. What message is that? The loud cry. So what does she say is the loud cry message? What what is it? It's the third angel, but I'm saying righteousness. That righteousness by faith. Then we show that publicly that the light is righteousness. Dus het licht gaat om de rechtvaardigheid door Christus. Now, yeah. I'm going to read. This is an interesting quotation. Manuscript releases, volume 5, 219. Ellen White heard Wagner and Jones in 1888 in Minneapolis present the message. Sister White heeft dus deze boeders gehoord in Minneapolis. Well, I tell you, general conference, thank you. I wish we could look at the history. This this will just take us, man, one session, just looking at the history. Very interesting history of what led up to the rejection of the 1888 message. Our leading brethren, leading up to 1888, you must, you must understand that Jones and Wagner were upcomers. Je moet zien dat zij ze beginnen zijn in het geloof. These were converts to the Advent message. Ze waren toen al bekeerd tot de Adventboodschap. Uriah Smith. Uriah Smith. Uh, Haskell. 
Haskell and many of our other pioneers and veel andere pioniers were on one side of the debate maar een kant van het debat and Jones and Wagner which were the younger um, younger ministers and Jones Wagner were the younger ministers were on the other side of the debate staan aan de kant van het debat now at this time en in die tijd Haskell started and Uriah Smith started rejecting Ellen White as a prophet Haskell and uh, Uriah Haskell and, and Uriah Smith, Smith they uh, Ellen White as the prophet oh. Yes. Yeah. He was rejecting Ellen White as a prophet saying that inspiration there's degrees of inspiration, degrees. Some parts are truly inspired, some parts these prophets are just speaking on their own behalf. Ze hebben heel veel twijfels over Ellen White als profetess. Now, why did they come to that conclusion? Why would Uriah Smith and Haskell, these leading great men of God, why would they come to that conclusion? Waarom zijn ze als godsdienaren uh, gekomen tot die conclusie ten aanzien van Ellen White? Because leading up to the 1888 General Conference session, want in de 1888 ja, General Conference, Ellen White had, I wouldn't say directly, but rumors were spreading that Ellen White and Wagner and Jones are conspiring together leading up to the 1888 conference. That these young men have influenced this old woman because they were young, she was much older. Young men have this and what she is now saying cannot be trusted. What she said cannot because she's siding with them and these young men has influenced us so now we have to teach there's degrees of inspiration we can't trust everything she says so leading up to the 1888 session dus de, om te kijken naar de 1888 These boodschap. rumors were spreading that Ellen White has been influenced by Jones and Wagner we gaan gerust al dat ze wat invloed door twee jonge mannen now friend my time's going prior to this and prior to this this leading up to and daarvoor ja yeah. Prior leading up to this, um, Jones and Wagner were writing at the Signs of the Times, publishing, writing for the church from the Signs of the Times. And these two men have also written in the Signs of the Times, articles. Uriah Smith and Haskell were writing, I believe, from the Review and Herald. And Haskell wrote it in another blog. So what had happened was, was that Haskell was writing on the covenants. Dus Haskell schreef over the... the, the over, eh? Verbonden. Verbonden. Of het verbond, sorry, covenant, yeah, verbond. Wagner also wrote on the covenant and he refuted what Haskell was saying on the covenant. Jong man schreef over het verbond en verwees ze naar wat Haskell heeft geschreven. Nee, 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 nee. Hij, hij schreef over het verbond, ja? maar uh, bestreed de positie van Haskell. Ze bestreed het, oh, ja, de positie van Haskell in zijn artikel. So Ellen White saw what happened, actually Ellen White I believe was in Europe. Ellen White was toen in Europe en zag Somewhere, dat. Somewhere, yeah, in Europe. Ja. <laughs> So what had happened was news came to Ellen White that our leading brethren are publishing two different views. Ze hoorde dat twee broeders dus is publiceren. Ellen White immediately wrote to Wagner rebuking him. En zij onmiddellijk schreef naar deze jonge mannen om hen daarop aan te spreken. Haskell rejoiced that Wagner got a rebuke. Dus Haskell was blij dat uh, dit een jonge mannen werden rebuke, dus aangesproken dus de White. The rebuke was not that Wagner was wrong. Niet dat uh, Wagner uh, fout was. The rebuke was they were not to publish contrary doctrines um, to the church masses and show that we divided. Ze hadden niet moeten openbaar brengen over de doctrines van de kerk. So Haskell took it as an endorsement from Ellen White that his views are correct. Dus Haskell nam aan dat hij dus in gelijk werd gesteld door Sister White haar reactie. Previously, a few years, a few, a few years before Wagner, een paar jaar voor de wa Wagner. Ellen White had written a rebuke to Wagner's father as well, publishing his views of the covenant. Had Ellen ook al Haskell aangesproken over zijn verbond? Not that he was wrong, but he was presenting at that time views contrary to the leading brethren. What that? Sorry. His views were contrary to the leading brethren. Hun gezichten waren dus gericht tot de broederen. Er was een tegenstelling van wat de andere broeders waren. Was in tegenstelling tot wat de andere broeders hebben geschreven. Ja. So. What happened was Wagner received the rebuke. This, uh, Wagner had this, 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 uh, the son, Wagner the son, not the father. Father is now out the picture. That he not built is. He receives the rebuke and he stops publishing his views in Signs of the Times. He ontving that and is gestopt met uh, schrijven in the Signs of the Times. A.T. Jones and, and Uriah Smith get uh, over a debate prior to 1888. 
Ed Jones en uh, Haskell gingen verder met Arise Smith. Een foolish debat. debate over the ten horns of, da of Daniel chapter 7. Over tien horen van Daniel 7. Now I want you to follow with me, friends. Zullen dat u dit goed uh, volgt? These are two. These are leading men in two different camps. Er zijn twee verschillende dingen. Are you seeing the conflict that are is arising, leading up to a most precious message. Het conflict waardoor het ontstaan is over onze kostbare boodschap. And it was over side issues of who's the ten horns. Over wie zijn dan de tien horen? Okay, the covenants were important, but Ellen White from the angel. Het woord is belangrijk, maar Ellen White rechts op de engel. Do you know what the prophet says? Weet je wat de profeet zegt? Wagner was saying that the law in Gala the law in the law in Galatians is the thank you the law in Galatians is the moral law. Uh, and, and Haskell is saying that it's not the moral law, it's the ceremonial law. Het gaat niet uh, om de morele wet, maar om de ceremonie ceremoniële wet. So, so they debate in leading up to 1888. Ze so debatteren over dus 1888. Do, you know do you know what the angel said to Ellen White? Wat weet wat de engel zei tegen Ellen White? I believe the angel came inside the, 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 the 1888 session. And you know what the angel said to Ellen White? De engel zei tijdens die sessie tegen Ellen White? That the law in Galatians is both. Dat de, dat de, dat de wet en gelaat zijn beide. Dat de wet en gelaat zijn beide. Dat zegt wat de engel zegt. Dat ze beide correct en beide wrong. Dat ze beide gelijk, maar ook gelijk fout zijn. Because they're both holding on to instead of them both embracing what they're both teaching. Because it's both correct. Maar ze zijn in feite beide correct. They are fighting each other, leading up to a most precious message. Ze vechten elkaar. In light of this conflict. Ellen White now is um, with these young men. It's new spread that Ellen White met with Jones and Wagner leading up to the conference. Dus Ellen White begeleidt deze jonge man oh, naar de conferentie. Oh, you see how Haskell now and Uriah Smith take this meeting. En we zien hoe Haskell en uh, Uriah Smith in deze conferentie. That the prophet is siding on the wrong side. Dat ze aan de andere kant, verkeerde so kant staan. So now we need to teach these degrees of inspiration. We moeten ook onderwijs over deze inspiratie van waarheid. So I, I want you to see what the prophet has to say. You know what? I'm going to have to skip. I want you to read this. I'm going to just tell you what she says. Yeah. Yeah, she says that what she heard from Wagner, she has never heard from human lips in her entire life. She says, not even God, she says. She says, except from her husband, in the conversations they would have just before he died. When they discuss him, it's only with a man over this side. She says that Wagner presents it. She says, the matchless charms of Christ. Uh, the blue words, matchless charms of Christ. This is what I've been trying to present before your minds. When Brother Wagner brought out these ideas in Minneapolis, it was the first clear teaching on the subject from any human lips I had heard, except in the conversations between myself and my husband. Question, was this new light? Was it new light? The prophet says she's oh. never ever heard any human lips speak these things what she heard Wagner speak. Ze heeft alleen maar met haar man besproken. Except over dit licht. with James White. James White understood the message before he died. Alleen haar man begreep deze boodschap Our voor friends, zijn dood. I believe. Now this is just my theory. I could be wrong, yeah. Ik kan misschien verkeerd hebben, maar wat ik tegen u zeg. James White died before 1888. James White overleed voor 1888. He was a man of great influence. Hij was een man van grote invloed. Uriah Smith was a next generation of the James White. Maar hij was een volgende generatie na James Haskell, White. Haskell, next generation of the James Ook White. Haskell was een generatie na James White. James White died not as a old, very old man. James White was still, he was a young man. Not James young, was young, was young, young, my age, but he was, he, he, he was a young man. Hij was nog jong toen hij zijn overleed. <laughs> Do you know what killed James White leading up to 1888? What is that, sister? Overwork. Ellen White says he done the work of 10 men. And that led him to a premature death. The man, that's why God raised up James White. He knew that this is a man that can do the work that needs to be done. What was James White's work? To help assist, establish the Seventh-day Adventist Church. He needed a man of energy. And James White was the man. James White was the average man. He had a lot of energy to do God's work. Had James White not done the work of 10 men, he would have been alive in 1888. Had James White niet een, een dood gestorven van you, tien mannen? He would have influenced the church by his decision. Hij had ik heb invloed door zijn besluiten. To the 1888 Hij omar, omarde dus de boodschap van 1888. But unfortunately God had put him to rest. His work was done. Maar ongelukkigwijs is het te rusten gelegd. Because we see from this quotation, James White understood the message of righteousness. We zien dat James White de boodschap exact begreep. Now I'm going to move very very quickly. 
She says, this is from Selected Messages Book 1, 2, 3, 4. She says, an unwillingness to yield up preconceived opinions and accept the truth lay at the foundation of a large share of the opposition manifested at Minneapolis against the Lord's message through Brethren E.J. Wagner and A.T. Jones. By exciting that opposition, Satan succeeded in shutting away from our people in a great measure the special power of the Holy Spirit that God longed to impart to them. Now, friends, let me say this. The message that Jones and Wagner presented, because the brethren were resisting the message. De, de woeders die stonden op om deze boodschap aan de kerk te verkondigen. Especially Jones. Uh, vooral Jones. Jones became very agitated. Um, uh, ge hij werd geïrriteerd. Geagiteerd. And while Uriah Smith was speaking. When Uriah sprak. On the ten wands. Over the tin horn. James uh, A.T. Jones' turn was to speak, and he got up to speak. And he just he stood up and spoke and out. And he said something which was not unkind to say about Uriah Smith. En was niet aardig in zijn uitspraak ten aanzien van Uriah Smith. And Ellen White gave him a rebuke about that. And Ellen White heeft hem erop aangesproken. But nonetheless, the message they were presenting was the correct message. Hoe dan ook, het was voor haar een goede boodschap. And when you see what took place in 1888. Ellen White actually wanted to leave the meetings. She actually got up to leave. And the angel tapped her and said, nope, you must remain. There's a work for you to do. Ellen White wilde eigenlijk de conference verlaten. Maar de engel zei, nee, je moet daarin blijven. Je moet erbij zijn. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm reading the red word. She says, when I purpose to leave Minneapolis, because of the spirit, there was a, a controversy taking place, which the Holy Spirit could not really move and walk amongst that, that, that environment. She says, when I purpose to leave Minneapolis, the angel of the Lord stood by me and said, no, not so. God has a work for you to do in this place. The people are acting over the rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So she says that the same rebellion that took place anciently were now taking place in the Minneapolis conference. The same rebellion that was in the Old Testament was also in the conference of Minneapolis. Now, Leroy Froom, have you ever heard of Leroy Froom? I don't know if I have a picture of Leroy Froome. Let's see if I got a picture of Froome. Did I put a picture of him? There's he. This is, can you see this man there? Oh, that's, the man uh, links from the that's, belt? that's Leroy Froome. Leroy Froome gives a different view of 1888. Our theologians give a different view of 1888. This. Our theologians, our theologians. Theologisch. Okay, yeah. Our theologians tell us that in 1888 the message was received. In 88 was the boodschap al ontvangen. That the church now has the correct message of righteousness by faith. Dat kerk had nu een correcte boodschap van de gerechtigheid door het geloof door kinderen. There were two men. Er zijn twee mannen. By the name of Willen and Short. Have you ever heard of these two men? Wie waren deze twee mannen? Willen and Short were two men. They were missionaries in Africa and Uganda. Er waren missionarissen in Uganda en Afrika. They came across some quotations about the 1888 message. They come out of the quotations from the 88-boodschap. These men went to the conf, the the E.G. White estate, especially Whelan. They came out to the E.G. White estate. And he asked for all the material that Ellen White has on the 1888 message. Om zo alle materialen die Ellen White had geschreven. This man revived in some sense. He wrote a book. He revived in some sense the 1888 message. Hij kwam tot bezinning over deze boodschap. There was conflict between him and the conference. Er was een conflict tussen hem en de conference. They eventually put him out of the, um, the um, Ellen White estate. He actually. Ze hebben hem eigenlijk weg uitgezet van de Ellen White Foundation. They kicked him out the school of theology. En ook uit de school van theologie. He went to the I don't know what would you call it like the principal the what would you call the head. The re yeah, 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 president. And he said yeah. that the message of righteousness by faith, what is hearing, is not correct. The president told him, pack up your things, you're leaving today. He said, but I'm just inquiring, like, because he, he, he worked for the church. He was a minister for the church, a, a missionary. And so he begged, like, you know, I'm just inquiring. And he says, no, nope, we don't want you here. Pack your things. And niet te vertrekken, maar hij moest vertrekken. So that very, he said the president took him right to his room, made him pack up all his stuff, give back his sauces, his, his spoons and everything. Hij moest zijn kamer plaatsen, zijn kamer gewoon ontruimd. And then 
He said as he was driving back to obviously meet his wife somewhere else in the United States. Hij was om zijn vrouw te ontmoeten in Amerika. He decided that before he leaves, let me go to the E.G. White estate. It's right here. Hij ging eens naar de E.G. White estate. Let me go investigate what is the true message of righteousness by faith. Wat is dan de rechtvaardig geloof? So he went there and he met brother. I believe it was brother Robertson, if I'm not mistaken. Hij ging wat zijn op brother Robertson. Arthur White was not there. Maar hij was daar niet. And so he said, like, um, he asks, what, what do you want? He says, no, I, I, I'm a student at such and such a place. I just want material, all Ellen White's material um, on the 1888 message. Brother Robinson didn't want to do that until he obviously he told him he knew his brother Robinson's son. And they, he, then he said, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then he went and he got the material for him. So, so he, now this is from the man's own lips. I'm telling you what the man said. So the man said that he's dead now. And he said he gave him the the materials. He gave him the materials. He went through the materials and he, he, he asked, can he get his typewriter? Because those are unpublished materials. At that time, most of it was unpublished. This is many years ago. He went, he got his typewriter. The fact that he's using a typewriter will tell you. Did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he gets his typewriter and he starts, he starts typing. And he starts typing. What he's reading. What he's typing, typing, typing. Eventually, it reaches eight o'clock, and Brother Robinson tells him he's closing now. And so he means right to start. He asked, Robinson? "Can I take the material home? Type, type it, bring it back in the morning, and give you." He said, "No, no, you have to leave it. Come back in the morning. You can continue your study." He must not mean. He must the eight o'clock and the following day come back. He said, "No problem." He said he went. He got a hotel not far from the White Estate. He said, "Sir, please give me a hotel there in the buurt." In the morning, he came back. Sometimes come he back again. Brother Robinson said, "I said I made a mistake." Robinson said, "I had a mistake made." I had given you the wrong material. I gave you the wrong material. This is the right material. Both. Yeah. That's right. Rubbed it on. And what Brother Willen, Willen said, and what, said? what he gave him was actually testimonies to ministers. What he gave him was testimonies to for the ministries. And he said that he, would, he, he didn't even want to type it because the book was published, testimonies to ministers. No need to type in something that's published. The book is already published. So he left, but thank God, Brother Robinson never said, hand over all what you've copied. He said that he had copied it by Brother Robinson. He has published it in a book. Ja, dat moet gepubliceerd in een boek. But I'm going to say that Brother Whelan is understanding fully of the righteousness by faith message is not correct. Maar Much of it is correct. Hij had een correcte vers, uh, verstand van gevaren door het geloof. But it's not fully correct. Maar het is niet helemaal volledig correct. But God correct. did use him in a special sense, him and Brother um, Whelan and Short, to revive the message within the church. Dus uh, ze zijn dus geïnfreerd door God om dit te openbaren aan de kerk. But Whelan got in contact with Leroy Vroom. We hebben een conflict met de woede vrouw. And based on the history of Willen, when he studied the writings, he said that the church has rejected the message. Het einde gebaseerd op die van de geschiedenis is de boodschap dus afgewezen de kerk. Leroy is Vroom's view, and he published the book that the church accepted the message. De Willen had dus ook wat de kerk heeft geaccepteerd gepubliceerd. And that the church is now preaching the correct message. Dat de kerk nu de correcte boodschap ja uitdraagt. But that's not what inspiration teaches. Dat is nou wat geïnspireerd wordt door de sprekers. Now. Because of time's sake, friends, I can't go through more and more of the history and, and get into it. But I'm gonna, I want to conclude. Yeah, I'm five minutes. How much minutes do I have left? Five. 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 <laughs> so inspiration says, yeah. She says. Now I want us to look at this as old friends. She says before I even go on. She says you possess in a large degree. Now what year is she writing this? I don't know if you can see what year is this. 1891. Is this before 1888 or after 1888? She says, you possess in a large degree the same spirit that was revealed in the conference at Minneapolis. The deception that was upon minds there, what's this word here? Still exists. Now it's true that the, the session in 1901, in some sense, the message was received by a few, not the leaders, but some did receive it. But yeah, she says that, 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 that deception is still exists on the minds of many people. She says some have not been willing to see and acknowledge their errors and their blindness and their blindness of mind remains. So uh, based on the prophets that our leading brethren did reject the message. Yes. They rejected the message. Even in 1901, friends, you know, we could go on and show you 1901, there was a great revival under the preaching of Jones and Wagner. But do you know after that great revival, everybody was rejoicing with righteousness by faith. 
in die tijd was iedereen echt uh, voor de church over gehechtvaard door het geloof van die doctrine. De church had reached a, a wonderful experience. De, de kerk had een, een wonderbaarlijke ervaring. Guess what happened the very next year? Dat is wat zal gebeuren de volgende jaar. She says when great light comes and it's not walked in, she says great darkness comes. Een grote licht komt zal ook een grote duisternis komen. The very next year, the same place jaar, where the, the meetings took place. When ze elkaar komen. The students were playing sports. Studenten waren gebracht. She said she saw Jesus on holy ground. Jesus op heilige grond. She said she saw Jesus with his hand outstretched to the church. At that time, Battle Creek, the general conference, while the students were playing sports on the ground. Ze zei zijn handen uitstrekken. His hands outstretched. Zijn handen uitgestrekt. She said she saw in vision. Ze zag het in een visioen. Saying to the church, the general conference. Zelf als voor de kerk in de general conference. The, 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 the headquarters of our movement and obviously the youth that are playing sports. Zo ook de de hoofdbureau van de van de union. If thou hadst known even in this thy day the things that belong unto your peace, but now they are hid from your eyes. Het is uit aan het gezicht ontrokken wat ze wat ze hadden gezien. Jesus at that time saw that his church was going in the wrong direction. Jesus zag in die tijd dat de kerk in de richting toe ging. In 1888, Jesus wanted to return. In 1888 wilde Jezus alweer al terugkeren naar de aarde. Friends, the great purpose of Jesus coming is not so much for us to go to heaven. Someone says, but that, 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 that is good. That is a good desire you have to go to heaven. Vindication of his name. Amen. Vindication of his name. Do you know what's the great purpose of wanting Jesus to come and this thing getting done? Wat is het grote doel voor Jezus om terug te keren? We are told that the cross is a revelation to our dull senses of the pain which from its very inception Sin has brought to the heart of God. Every time, as long as sin exists, she says, when you look at Calvary, she says, that pain, when you look at Calvary, she says, was in the heart of God from the very birth of sin. That's how God has felt. Ze zegt, als we elke keer kijken naar het kruis, wat daar heeft plaatsgevonden met Jezus' offer, met zijn bloed. As long as sin exists, zo'n zonde bestaat, God's heart is breaking in pain. Uh, brak Gods hart in pijn. Why do I want Jesus to come back? Waarom wil Jezus snel nog terugkeert? Why I want this work to be finished? Waarom moet deze wereld afgelopen zijn? Because I want his pain to stop. Ik wil dat die pijn stopt. We are all called to be medical missionaries. Er zijn groepen voor belangrijke my uh, werk. Great, my greatest work as a medical missionary. Mijn grootste werk is de My greatest work as a medical missionary. Medical, medical. As medical workers. My greatest work is to ease or stop the pain of him whom I love. Om de, de pijn te stoppen van het menselijk leven. And there's only one way to stop his maar één manier om dat te doen stoppen. I can't control what you do in your life. Ik kan niet controleren in uw leven. I can't control the general conference. Kan ook de general conference I controleren. I can't control brother, sister, anyone. Ook geen broers, wie dan ook. But I can control what I do in my life. Ik kan niet control, controleren wat ik in mijn leven doe. Inspiration says every departure from right. In frase dat elke every, every departure from every, right. Elke, uh, uh, Vertrek van uh, rechtvaardigheid. Every deed of cruelty. Every deed of cruelty. Uh, every zaak van de uh, schuld. Elke daad van schuld. Every failure on the part of humanity to reach his idea. Elke mislukking voor van de mens om het ideaal te behalen. Van de mens om het ideaal te behalen. to his heart. Brengt uh, verdriet in zijn hart. So every time I fail to reach his idea, I bring grief to him. Wanneer ik dus faal in zijn ogen, dan breng ik verdriet in zijn hart. Every time I depart from the right, I bring grief to him. Wanneer ik dat doe, dan breng ik ja, verdriet in zijn hart. Imagine loving someone so much and you love them so much, but you bring the most pain to their heart. Om te voorstellen als u als hij zoveel je houdt, dan breng je verdriet like in zijn hart. I'm saying when you look at Calvary, man, life does not become valuable. When you look, I'm saying that if a life of sin is a life to love, then when you look at Calvary, you say, I don't want a life of sin. Als ik naar het kruis kijk, weet ik dat ik gefaald en niet, ja, niet meer zo kan leven. That will be much more desirable. Dat zal meer uh, uh, ons aantrekken. Than to love a life of sin. Dan te leven een, een leven van zonde. Breaking the heart of Jesus. Bre- het breken van Jezus hart. Now, friends, I, I, I wish we can continue. Ik hoop dat we kunnen continueren. Ik kan niet meer continue much longer. Ik kan niet meer verder gaan. But remember we never get to where. Maar dat u bewust bent van het gegeven. Don't blame me. U moet mij niet van schuldigen. I got another study coming up. Elder. Brother is it also in 1888. Yes. What many people don't um, don't know or some of them don't yeah. know is that 
Y thank yes, Elder. I want to just to because yes, thank you so much for that point. Mm. So in 1888, thank you so much for that. In 1888, the Sunday law was already enforced in certain states of America, and so what God was doing, pre, trying to prepare His church, was the message to Jones and Wagner: righteousness by faith. And do you know what God done as He saw that the church is rejecting the message of righteousness by faith? He pulled back the Sunday law. Do you know whom he used? He used A.T. Jones. A.T. Jones went to Congress and he refuted it. The man had a photographic memory. And he refuted the Sunday law. Why there should be no Sunday law? And eventually they pulled it back. Why did God pull it back? His church was not ready. See, the Sunday law doesn't hinge upon the Pope. Not even upon the devil. It hinges upon God's people being prepared. But now the Sunday law is very close. And we're almost there, friends. We are almost there. May God help us to get ready. Do you want to get ready? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father. Ons liefdevolle Vader. We thank you so much for your presence that has been with us. Dank u voor aanwezigheid met ons. Thank you so much, Lord, for a reminder of our history. Dank u voor om te herinneren aan onze geschiedenis. And we know that the great purpose of history, as Paul says. Dat we nou weten over de publicatie van deze gebeurtenissen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, that we should not last after the same things they did. Dat we zullen weten dat we niet achterblijven. Father, please, may we learn from our history. Heer, wanneer wij leren van deze geschiedenis. May, may we not repeat the same mistakes that took place in 1888. Dat niet zelf fout zal maken als in 1888. Please, may our hearts truly be surrendered to Jesus. Heer, dat we onze harten mogen overgeven aan Jezus. May our hearts be attracted to Him like a magnet. Harten als een magneet zal werken om tot Jezus te komen. Please, Father, help us to see and understand your great love for us. Father, help ons om te verstaan door uw liefde heer voor ons. For this can be the only true motive of obedience. Het is enige motivatie voor onze voor onze gehoorzaamheid. Please bless every one of your children present and those who are viewing this. Heer, zegen ieder kind die hier aanwezig is. You know the struggles within each heart. Je kent de worstelingen in elk hart. And we are asking for deliverance over whatever it is, Lord, that your children are battling with. Wat ook mogen zijn voor, voor al deze worstelingen. We all need victory over sin. We hebben het nodig of winning over onze eigen zonden. And this can only come about. Dat, dat is waar het over gaat. As we see and understand your love. Dat we kunnen zien en begrijpen van uw liefde. As revealed through your son Jesus. Dat u heeft geopenbaard door uw zoon Jezus Christus. Thank you so much for hearing this prayer. Dank u heer voor het aanhoor van deze boodschap. For we pray these things humbly Father in Jesus name. Bidden we in Jezus naam. Amen. Amen. Yeah. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is.